Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective, almost game day, almost product launch trend. One of the favorite things we do on this channel. I love everything we do on this channel, but we get to rank players and we're going to be doing our top 10 series today. Tran, I couldn't be more excited to do it with you almost. I'll be in Austin very, very soon, my friend. Yes, you're coming home, coming home, seeing the team. Uh, yeah, this this was a, a lot difficult than previous years so I'll, I'll put it that way i mean definitely the first four were set in stone we agreed on that completely but there's some names that were left off this list that you know i was kind of shocked with this was the most by far the most difficult list we've had to put together and and we'll, we'll in a moment here we'll share the list that we ended the season with which is kind of similar to what we started with 2020 this is I think the third year in a row we've we've ranked our, our top ten. Uh, for for those who grew up back in the college football news days, old school website, one of my favorite things growing up is they used to rank the top ten players going into the season. Shout out to I think uh, Pete Futak. I think he still writes over there or somewhere on the webs. But back, I'm talking about like early two thousands. Every single season. For every team, all 100 some teams, they would do the top 10 players for every team and stack rank them. And it, I, I, I always, it always resonated with me. I'm glad I have the opportunity to do this with you, Tram, because they, he would never, he may have multiple positions. He wouldn't, it was all about who, who are the best players on this football team going into the season period, regardless of position, regardless of all these other variables. So, how we, you know, our criteria is very, very similar because I was influenced by what Pete used to do. And we'll have some players on here that are in the same position group. We'll have some players on here who are, who have proven a lot. And we'll have some players on here who haven't proven very much, but it's all about projections, what we know that is on their plate for this season and ultimately how they'll perform. So that's, that's how we've done in the past. Tran, Let's show the people real quick. Oh, before we do that, subscribe. Like, subscribe, and share. Let's get it. That's how we get the community popping. We have some big news coming, some stuff in the works that's almost official, but I can't release the, the, the word just, just yet, but it's coming. So we'll, we'll, we'll probably announce that on a live chat before the game, I'm hoping. But, Tran, let's uh, show how we finished 2020. And we took a screenshot of our, our video. And a lot of these people, so, Tran, what is it? Osai, Cosme, Ellinger, Brown, Graham. So half the list is gone. Yep. Right? And I think all those guys... I think all of those guys we had on our preseason list of those five before we started 2020, if I, if I recall correctly. Now, there's some people on here who are obviously be on our 2021 list. But I think what is interesting here and why this was so difficult is after, you know, not to tease anything, but after a few couple of these names, it's really getting into who's who is ascending and who's going to prove themselves. So for all the experience we have, and we have a lot of experience, especially on the defensive side of the ball, but when we're talking about our top 10 dudes, I think it's going to be really interesting to see, uh, you know, get folks' opinion on how this list breaks out, Trent. Yeah, no, absolutely. So if we're actually breaking down this, uh, the, the, the list, I, I don't think we did a terrible job on it. And, you know, if, if you're looking at it, um, Bijan people were probably a little bit that they wanted to see him produce beforehand, but as you saw, he did produce his, his freshman year when he got the chance. Um, you know, Sam Cosme and Joseph Osai, they, they were our highest drafted players, you know, Sam Ellinger before his knee injury, he, he started producing in the NFL and that that's one of our criteria. Uh, are they going to have an NFL career? Are they going to play? Uh, are they going to play on Sundays? 
are they going to produce are they going to are they going to stay healthy through the uh through the year as well and continue to produce what they can produce and that's why you will see some some names that are on this list that are on uh the list this year as well you know what's interesting is um you know are you gonna you know people having a career at the next level one of the big stories right now in in all of college football uh, Bishop Sycamore, who I, I, you know, just have to give a shout out. If you've been living under a rock as a sports fan, we have a full blown fire festival situation happening at the high school level where we've got people who are con artists. We have people who are 20 something years old out there getting their asses whooped against IMG. And all of this has been unfolding the last few days. So I just had to throw this in because it was too hilarious and too wild of a story, not to mention. So I just wanted to have a quick laugh before we jump into our top 10. Let's be honest. The thing that they're guilty of is they got sloppy. There's probably other schools out there pulling some of the same stuff. You think there's other fake schools? No, 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 not 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 to this degree. But I mean, I, I do see, I I do know that schools will. will Wasn't there a movie games. uh with Justin Long? What was it called? Was it Accepted or something? Accepted, like that? yeah, where they made up a fake college. Yeah, this is like to do that in real life, bro, with sports. Like in all seriousness, like if my kid was on IMG and some and they got hurt, I'm suing everybody. I'm suing oh, Disney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, are you kidding me? You didn't ba- you didn't fact check this? Like, <laughs> like did, ESPN is a little bit at blame for this, you know. I, I know that they're, they're responsible for it actually coming to the forefront, but but at the same time, did they play twice on ESPN? <laughs> They played once on eight, once. They okay. played twice in the weekend, two times in three days. Once yeah. on ESPN, but that, that was which was the IMG game, <laughs> and then halfway through the broadcast, and they grow big. And got, the, got got smoked you know, like, by a sixteen-year-old. <laughs> Who are these guys? These imposters. You got the wet bandits out there. It's just it's out. Of, it was out of control. But anyway, uh, you know, we 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 digress, right? You know, we just wanted to have a quick laugh before we jumped into the uh, to the top 10. Tran, do you want to go over uh, honorable mention real quick and I'll chime in with some commentary? Yeah, so this is why, this is one of the reasons why we thought this was such a difficult list. We had to filter our honorable mentions down to a list of five. <laughs> so usually we have one to two, but we, we had seven, eight. Honestly, we could have probably done a top 20 if we wanted to with this. But, you know, for, first uh, first honorable mention is Casey Thompson. You know, um, we don't we don't know what's going to happen with uh, Hudson Card. Is he going to stay healthy? Is he going to get pulled at any point? You know, and we think that we think that with uh, uh, with the Sarkeesian factor added in, you know, the, the quarterback is going to have it's going to have it play a factor throughout the whole season. It's the most important position in college football and football in general. So Casey Thompson was on there. Um, and, you know, we also need them for the depth and to keep pushing Hudson card as well. You want to touch on anything else with uh, Casey? No, I'm going to touch on Casey in a little bit uh, because uh, there's some other comments we need to add, but uh, you can go ahead to the next player. Uh, next player is Cameron Dicker. Special teams is very important. You know, there's three phases to the game, and special teams is one of them. He is short up. He's a very reliable kicker. Um, I think he's pretty clutch. The only time I've seen him miss a game-winning or an important field goal was the Iowa State game, and that, you know, you and I both agree was not his fault. Um, and not only that, he's taken over the punting capabilities as well. So he's he's all-around kicker, I, I think, if he has a good year, he's going to solidify himself as one of the best kickers in the game. Um, he, he's probably the best onside kicker I've ever seen in my life. The way he gets that double bounce up in the air. I'm it, glad it, you mentioned that. It's, it's fantastic. So I'm glad I mean, you mentioned that because all three levels um, – and his freshman year, it was he was a little up and down with kickoffs. Mm-hmm. But since then, he has really, really been very – you know, pretty good at kickoffs. 
punting, you know, we, you know, he's, he's at least won the job to start this. And then his field goal kicking, which is his signature, right? So all three facets of, of the kick game, Cameron Dicker's involved. There's no reason that held him from being on the list per se. Uh, you know, there's definitely an argument to be made. We actually had Cameron Dicker on our list, I think, last year, the year before um, that we did this exercise. So we're big fans of Cameron Dicker. He's he's still right there. Uh, we just had some other guys that we're really excited about, which is a good thing for this football team. Uh, next one is going to be kind of shocking because we had him as our as one of our breakout players is Jordan Whittington. Um, we the only reason why we haven't added on the, on there is injuries. I think in my in my opinion, it's injuries, um, and we saw it already earlier this season that he's he's sat out a couple practices just just from a soft tissue hamstring issue, which soft tissues really do affect you for weeks, perhaps even months. So I want to see him. It, it just has nothing to do with his skill set. We think his skill set's probably top notch on the team, and uh, he's he's a necessity. But if he's not on the field, uh, he honestly can't produce. So he's he's not he he wouldn't be technically one of the people that would scale to the next level. Yeah, and this is also a great example of what Colin Cowherd talks about all the time in terms of the more information you get, opinions change or facts change. How we feel about Jordan Winnington hasn't changed. I still think that if healthy, he will be our top breakout candidate. I still feel that way. I know what I saw in the spring. I know what I heard and what I've seen with the reports. But with him dealing with that hamstring thing, I'm hitting the caution. I'm hitting the the, the the that caution button the way we saw with Colin Johnson a couple of years ago, where it just kept popping up, mm-hmm. and we you know he would sit for a little bit. And and hamstrings are really funny, man. Like, especially someone who cuts, who has to cut a lot. Absolutely. And I'm not saying like he's he's full go, right? As of right now, he's full go for 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 Louisiana. So this is not, but is the the what's holding it back is the concern. And and some of this is going to be a recurring thing with some other guys in terms of just the amount of games that they played. I think Jordan Whittington right now is at six games played total. Uh, as a Texas Longhorn, which is not a whole lot, which is why he's a breakout guy, but we know what he's capable of. So, uh, show us yeah, to play with. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if next year when we show up the postseason players of the year, him right. being in the top being five, in the top ten. Yeah, so I wouldn't I, w- okay. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, next one, someone we both are high on, and we've been high on for a long time, is Anthony Cook. We think that uh, we think that he has all the skills, and if it clicks with him, especially with this defense, he he takes to this coaching. He he can be a very very versatile defensive back and a defensive player for our team. Um, he's, I'm just happy for him. Same same here. I, I hope this I hope this really starting nod gives him that confidence, and you know, using him as the Swiss Army knife that they did, a la Buda Baker. I know I said that, but he's not Buda Baker. Don't don't make that comparison. Uh, but you know, I I think one of the one of his best attributes is is the way he blitzes the quarterback, and I think I think he can cause some havoc and cause some just bad decisions to be made from an offensive standpoint. Great suddenness, fantastic quick twitch and coverage, and I think in that nickel position, the way that he'll be utilized by PK in the scheme. Will all of those things play to his strengths? And I think some of these players, they just need the right coach or the right mentor to make things click. And I think the light bulbs come on with Anthony Cook. Again, no person, no individual player we were more thrilled to hear about uh, than than we were with Anthony. And then uh, last one, last one is uh, he's a, he's a transfer, he's a gofu. Um, he's, he, apparently the coaching staff is extremely high on him. They see him as such a versatile player, um, at the second, uh, on the line and at the second level as well. Um, we're going to see him in different formations, different positions as well. And I, I think he's someone who could cause havoc within this defense as well. So I think a gofu is a more potentially, potentially a more talented version of, of Ray Thornton in some ways. No disrespect to Ray Thor, no slight on him. Uh, you know, Ben Davis is also very, very talented in his own right. If you want to insert Ben Davis here, sure. 
But Gofu is interesting because he won practice awards at Notre Dame. He was lauded for how he competed in scrimmages, scout team, all those things. And then was pretty productive the amount of times he did get snaps. So he has a little bit, to me, he's a little bit more of a proven commodity than some of the other transfers that we're getting, considering their situations and how he's developed. I'm excited to see his motor. I think he's going to be a guy that, again, is on the cusp of this list at the end of the year. Um, as another person, you mentioned Swiss Army Knife for Anthony Cook. That could be somebody we have yep, him at, as well. that, at that outside linebacker position in this defense as well. So thanks, Tran. I appreciate you going through that. So let's get let's get to the meat of this, right? Uh, so number 10 player on our list, somebody who somebody who we have some emotional ties we, to. We ride or die for him. We, we, we ride or die. This is a, a channel that supports this young man. Uh, a young man who has been on this is our preseason list before. Mr. Roshan Johnson. One of and when I see we 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 stand by what we say here, right? When we say Roshan's one of the best football players on this team, we mean it. He's a core special teamer. He was a a guy who came into this program as a quarterback and still could be an emergency quarterback if something were to happen. Steve Sarkeesian's already alluded to that, but he embodies everything good about what you want for the culture of your program. And this isn't just some Rudy shit, man. This is this guy's a freaking an awesome he's football a stud. player. <laughs> he's a stud. Yeah. He's a stud. And and Bijan Robinson being here, I think kind of some a lot of people forget about how good of a football player Roshan Johnson is. The only reason why he didn't make our 2020 list is because he was injured the entire season. Had some severe, severe shoulder problems, things he was battling, really nicked up. And yet you still see that 10 games played. So he's a warrior. Still mm-hmm. will play through injury, fight for the football team, do what he can. Yeoman's effort in short yardage, catches the football. There's really nothing that he doesn't, there's nothing that he's not good at. There's no yeah. there's no real glaring weakness to his game. We never had we th- ball security issues with Roshan Johnson. We thought we thought uh pass protection would have been his weakness, but no, he steps up in that pocket and he he lays a he lays the wood. Um one thing that you touched on was was his health last last year. You would think that that would have been a huge drop off, but no, if you look at his averages, his averages were right on par where he were, where he was supposed to be at 5.3. So, it, he he battles through everything, and he, he's a he's a well well rounded running back. And you know I'm, and he's gonna make some NFL team. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, he will make. A, I yes, agree. He will be an NFL player. I agree. You want you want football players like that. You win mm-hmm. with football players like this. So number ten player on our list, Roshan Johnson. Hopefully, he can stay healthy. And and he's gonna help this football team. Yeah, is he gonna have the most amazing stats? Bijan, we know Bijan's the face, right? It's not gonna have, but what he contributes to to winning and the things that he can do. And then if he you ask him to carry the bag, he can do it. We know mm-hmm. that. All right, number nine, one of uh, one of one of our more upside guys, but a guy that the coaches are thrilled about. And I think the first you know real big beneficiary of the offensive line coaching change. Christian Jones, now being coached by Kyle Flood, somebody who's had a lot of success getting tackles to the league. And when you look at the body type of Christian Jones, moving over from the right from right tackle to left tackle, does have experience under his belt. 23 games played, started pretty much every game last season, uh, struggled, had, to add some, had some inconsistencies. But you also look at the tape, and we touched on this in our breakout player video, so we won't spend too much time here. We went more in depth with Christian Jones there. The feet, the athleticism, the package is there for him to ascend as a prospect. He's got to put the film out there now. He's got a young pup back there at quarterback he's got to protect that he'll be responsible for, as well as paving the way for five. I like what I'm seeing from Christian Jones. I do too. Um, they, they've 
rated him the highest or graded him the highest uh, offensive lineman throughout throughout practice. Um, he has a prototypical body build for a left tackle, long, lean, athletic, like you said. Um, I think I think him being a junior now with proper coaching, you know, and the proper weight put on him, the proper um, college college uh, weightlifting program put on him, you know, I think now's the time it's going to click for him. So, you know, I, I feel I feel you're going to see the left hand side, the left hand side of our line be a, be towards the middle of the season. It's going to be a strong suit of our team. 100 percent. Number eight, QB one. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> there's no delay there or anything. And the reason why we have Hudson Carter, so may, many people may ask, because I showed Casey Thompson's career stats earlier. Hey, Steve. You know, I understand what you said earlier about projecting, but unproven, blah, blah, blah. Show me a Steve Sarkeesian quarterback, at, especially at the college level or any level. That hasn't that produced. Has not been productive. Yeah. So, you know. Matt Castle. Shout out to, <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> shout out to Texas Homer, who did a fabulous job of covering Hudson Card and the video he dropped today. You guys will most likely see this video September 1st, September 2nd, before before the week is over. But the, the video that Texas Armor dropped today and the relationship that Hudson Carr will have an IL deal with Inside Texas, but they did a great job of covering the trajectory of his football career and, you know, the athletic side. And, and it's funny because a lot of the highlights when, when Homer was showing you guys the huddle tape, it's so funny because I was at a lot of those games in Lake Travis when I when I lived in Austin and I got a chance to go to House Park and DKR and in all these different places to go see. At that time, I was really trying to go see Garrett Wilson be ripped to be mm-hmm. off the rip with y'all because Matthew Baldwin was the quarterback who went to Ohio State and Garrett Wilson went to Ohio State and Hudson Carr was out there playing receiver, returning punts. So I'm glad Homer showed y'all kind of the development there, but that entire time Hudson Carr was blowing it up in the camps and Steve Sarkeesian, Jeff Banks were recruiting him at Alabama. So you guys have to understand, I'm glad, you know, touching on that history there, right? It's very, very important to understand that's who they were always looking at for what they were doing then. Okay. And when you look at, okay, this is the person we're, we're recruiting about. This is also why, and I know this is a weird segue, but follow me here. This is why you guys have to have faith in the Malik Murphy take. Because if they were recruiting Hudson Card before Hudson Card ever got his first start at Lake Travis, because these same questions were happening. When Hudson Card got, he was a high four star. I think he was like number two or three dual threat before he even took over. And then he ascended, went on Elite 11, all that. But they were projecting based upon the arm talent and how explosive of a quarterback he seemed to be by the evaluators. And you're seeing the same thing happen with Malik Murphy. The thing is, he plays at Sarah, not a great high school, can't really showcase himself the way, you know, Cade Klubnick can at, with this powerhouse offensive line that Westlake has and, and better coaches. And he's got Dodge over there. He's got all these resources, right? Blake Murphy doesn't have those same resources. Hudson Card was playing receiver. But we are in the projection and development business. So Hudson Card is getting this pass right now because of development purposes. Now, Casey Thompson, we show his career stats. Now, a lot of the bulk, like the six TDs, four of those we know were in the Alamo Bowl, bulk of the yards, Alamo Bowl. When somebody like this gets unseated, who's developed in the program, done everything that the coaches have asked, whether it was Tim Beck, whether it was Mike Yersich, now to Steve Sarkeesian. It's a development and produ- in, 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 in tools business. Who's going to develop? Some people just develop at a faster rate. And right now it seems as though if Hudson Card is developing at a faster rate and he's already tied with Casey Thompson, then you have to get it going now. And I'm, 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 Spending a lot of time talking about this because a lot of you guys have been hitting me in the comments that are in your feelings about Casey Thompson not starting. The coach already told y'all he's going to play on Saturday, okay? 
He's going to get the opportunity. And let me tell you this, and before I pass it to Tran, if Casey Thompson had won the job, Tran, we would have put Casey Thompson at number eight right now. Mm-hmm. Regard whoever the trigger man is for Steve Sarkeesian was going to be on the list. Period. Yep. So I'll, I'll pass it over to you. No, it goes it goes to what you're talking about is the produ- uh, producing. And if they had a previous relationship with Hudson Card, they knew what they were getting in him. And one of the things that you know everyone talks about is Casey Thompson's a great athlete, uh, coach's son, things like that. But you brought it up. You brought it up earlier. Was that when you went and saw the games? Casey Thompson was, I mean, not Casey Thompson. Hudson Card was returning punts. So I mean, he he's an athletic quarterback, and I think he was ranked third third dual threat athletic uh, dual threat quarterback when coming out of his class. Um, not only that, he's a great pocket passer. Um, I, uh, one thing you're going to have to deal with is uh, we touched on this on the preseason uh, or the, the Louisiana uh, review was that he, he's going to have to work on eyeing down, uh, eyeing down his first option. And that that's every young quarterback. And it's something Everyone. that he, every young quarterback, but it goes into your development piece. You know, I trust Sarkeesian to develop, develop him the right way to fit the system that's needed for him to produce. And, you know, spot number eight, regardless of anything was going to be QB one, whether, whether it was, uh, whether it was Casey Thompson or Hudson card and Hudson card got the nod for starting quarterback. So we're rolling with it. I'm excited for him to showcase himself. I appreciate the fact that Casey Thompson still has that opportunity. This isn't, we, I'm a fan of both of these kids. Mm-hmm. Seriously, I'm a fan of both of these kids. And, and if it turns out that Hudson Card, the lights are too bright, or it turns into a Garrett Gilbert situation, you never want to see anything like that. But if it happens, you have another guy there that can do this, it. This won't turn into a Garrett Gilbert situation. And, and I, I'm just saying, if, if you know, I don't think it will either. I agree with no, you. No, no, no. 100% it won't because the, the, the issue with Garrett Gilbert was is he was the number one overall player in the nation coming out of high school. And then he was he was set to back up Colt McCoy, the most producing quarterback of all time who brought us to a national championship game. And he played respectable in the national championship game. So he had those high standards coming in when he comes in and he produces a five and seven team. That's what that's with, with actual athletes around him. We don't have the same type. We we don't have the same type of recruiting that's around Hudson card. So, you know, fans are smart enough to understand that, you know, there's going to be time for us to develop into a, to a powerhouse again. Right. Instead of, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Garrett Gilbert was taking over. I mean, it was Cole McCoy and Vince Young, Chris Mm -hmm. Sims, and major Appleby and James Brown. Like we were just hitting, 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 and then yep. it was like, <laughs> so, smash. And, and, you know, again, no disrespect to Sam Ellinger or anybody else, but they think that there's a real uptick from a skill level perspective with what Hudson Carr brings to the table. And this goes back to what was said behind the scenes with the previous regime in practice, even coming from Sam Ellinger's mouth. He can make throws that, you know, most, most guys, myself included, cannot make. So if he's able to put that all together, I'm excited for him to get that opportunity. We could potentially have a superstar on our hands. And I think we could potentially be looking back at the 2020 class that Tom Herman had with Hudson Card and B. John Robinson that were the ones that finally got this program to turn around and turn get around. The track. So we're, we're hopefully speaking that into existence for Hudson Card and for whatever happens with Casey Thompson, if he gets the opportunity to play, ready when called upon. Same way we feel about Roshan Johnson. Being part of the team, we want him here, we love him. We want everybody to, to, to have that opportunity, but the best players have to play. Number seven, who's he throwing to? Uh, so we added a receiver on here who we had on the list last year, Joshua Moore. You look at that, eight games, nine touchdowns. It's like, ooh. Quite productive, but we all know the inconsistencies that Joshua had. And um, term I applied to somebody else before. I think I was talking about fantasy football. You know, he can't be a werewolf anymore. It's got to be consistent. He can't just break out and turn into a monster. You know, once a month, and then we never see you again. And it's within games. 
because there were some games last year. I think it was it was Oklahoma State where he had no catches until overtime and then caught the game winner. Yeah, and it was an awesome play. Like we've got to see it every week because he's got the tools to do it. And what I love is this receiver crew that we're starting. Jordan Whittington, six one, about 200, 195, 200 pounds. Josh Worthy, yeah. one. 175. He's going to be a worthy 6'1", 170. The body composition, we touched on this in the in the Louisiana preview, has changed. But the one that actually has some skin in, skin in the game, and, and, and skins on the wall, and has produced in, in the games, Joshua Moore. Yeah. He's played 12 games, 10, 12 games, 10 touchdowns. Um, yeah, and he, he's, he's got big game experience. He's our most reliable – uh, our most reliable. He's the one who's actually produced it. We've touched on that before. Um, you know, he, he's going to be the leader of that room. So I think, I think uh, it's going to be, he's going to, he's due for a big season because we talked about the Sarkeesian effect for quarterbacks, quarterbacks, best friend is, is wide receivers. So, you know, I think, and they're going to distribute the ball. It's never just a one, one guy for, for Sarkeesian offense. So uh, I, I continue to see him on the path of, of I would say, I'd see 700 yards. You think you think that would be a successful season for him? I mean, it depends on how many games are, are, are being played. You know how I am. I, I need some 1,000-yard receivers now. I need some big numbers. I need some all Big 12-type numbers and performances. Little Jordan Humphrey – was I mean how many yards did he have? He had to, and I'm not saying that that he's going to have the same type of amount of volume and targets. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're going to get seven or eight hundred yards, then you need to have 12, 13 touchdowns. Like there needs to be. It can't just be this typical because that's the typical Texas receiver numbers we've seen over the years. If you play enough, got to have more. No pun intended. Got to have more there, <laughs> and. With Joshua Moore, the skill set is there. Like the, some of these Oklahoma dudes you've seen over the last few years, like I, I've comped him to D.D. Westbrook in the past, like just body type and how he moves on the field. But that guy was consistent and that guy got opportunities. It's not just not all Joshua Moore. So I'm not putting all this mm-hmm. on Joshua Moore. Uh, some brothers came at me in the comments and said, well, Steve, he wasn't being targeted, blah, blah, blah. Well, I also saw the brother get rerouted at the at the line of scrimmage. Hopefully, he's improved his technique, his strength, and those things don't happen as as often. I do think the scheme will help. Steve Sarkeesian understands with these smaller receivers, I've got to get, I got to use a lot more motion. I've got to have people off the. You're going to see bunch formations, all sorts of things, just to get people, you know, and not even dealing with these annoying corners and getting space. He understands how to coach that. You know, he had Waddle, he had Devontae Smith. These guys aren't those guys, but the body size in terms of physicality is similar. So I think you'll you'll see the best of them because of the scheme, because he's older, because of the quarterback. There's a lot to like for, for Joshua Moore here. Let's move on to number six. Josh Thompson, the elder statesman, been here since 2017, played a bunch of different positions. He's had a journey at Texas, but what I think we've we've learned is he's you know like you said with Caden Stearns, one of the best athletes on the team, and I think he really started to get more comfortable the last half of season of 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 twenty twenty playing corner, but same thing consistency we ha- we have to see that from Josh, he ha- he he has the rare opportunity to combine physicality with speed and athleticism because he brings all those things to the table. He has all those traits. So I'm excited to see Josh Moore in his final campaign really ball out and, and make a name for himself amongst the uh, NFL scouting community. Yeah. Um, so we, we on this channel love to hear players talk, talk big about other players because they know, they know who the, who, who the ballers are and who are the ones that they're not worried about. So, and Joshua Moore was, he, "Quote unquote, big brother, big brother who who knows what's up." Um, so, um, uh, Josh Thompson, 
Josh Thompson. Sorry, 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 Josh Thompson. Uh, yeah, he he he's not only that. He recently, I think, uh, Devarmia. Demarion Overshown listed him as one of the fastest players on the team. Um, he he's produced here, at, not not from a not from an interception turnover standpoint, but you know passes defended, five passes defended. You know when you're on the ball, corner is pretty impressive, especially in the in the Big Twelve where you're dealing with the the wide receivers or the slots that you you uh, you mentioned earlier, the little quick twitch guys. But he has 56 tackles and, you know, well, actually 74 with with uh, with um, assisted tackles. So, you know, he, he has production to back it up. And not only that, this is the first year in a long time where upperclassmen are in all the secondary. So he's he could just worry about his responsibility and know that his his teammates should should know exactly where to be within the defensive scheme. So I'm I'm really excited to see him, and I think he'll test off the charts in pro day and and uh, also and also uh, the combine if he gets an invite. Josh in this scheme can be as good as he wants to be, and I think some people may say we we might be overrating him here. Depending on who you talk to, there may be other players that that other people feel stronger about. Uh, we know that the young guys in the room are pushing them as well. So they have to be at their best. But when when push comes to shove in terms of the, the receivers that are in this conference now, and they've seen really good, you know, receivers over the years. I mean, go back two years ago when we faced the, the, the just every single week we were facing somebody, right? So I think that that experience, that athleticism, PK, Terry Joseph, now's the time. Now's the time for Josh, and I think 2021 will be a big, big year for him. So number five, our top five players, and this one I think is going to be a a shocker to some people, but um, you'll notice that there's a level here. After that, it's pretty proven, guys. But our five, we have this guy here because we think that highly of him. And he plays in one of the best position groups, if not the best position group we have on the team. Mr. Moro Ojimo, only 20 years old, four years on campus, only 20 years old. Uh, had some production last year, 21 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, and only nine games played. Tran, I think we both feel like the sky's a limit for Ojimo. Why is that? Number one, he's young. Hey, I mean, when you were 20, were you fully developed? <laughs> no, and he has some of the best trainers in the world helping him get there. Uh, natural genetics that he has. I mean, he's a big, big kid. Um, not only that, he has Mr. Keandre Colbert right next to him. <laughs> that that uh, that helps out a lot. You know, he'll he'll be taking away a lot of uh, a lot of quote unquote um Keandre stats from uh for for him because he's gonna be taking on double teams and he all he has to do is win a lot of one on ones which we know he's very capable of that. And uh towards the end of the last season when he was getting more playing time, he started producing. I mean most of his most of his tackles uh came later on in the season when when um the uh, later on in the season and once again it was a shortened season as well. So I just, I just anticipate, you know, just, just a huge explosion for him. Me too. I see. Well, here's the other thing. I think before everything started, everybody had Alfred Collins penciled in as your defensive tackle or three tech next to Cobra. Or if you wanted to say, you know, from a recruiting perspective, Vernon Broughton. But Ojimo was like, not so fast, my friend. Shout out to Lee Corso. Yeah. And and it's not because those guys are bust or not playing well. Those guys are – it's Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton, and they're both going to play a lot. Ojimo's developed to become that good. And we saw in the spring, when we went to the game, we looked at each other like, is Ojimo the best player on the team? Mm-hmm. And the way – like, the he was dominant. In, 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 now, granted, we saw one scrimmage slash practice. I get it. 
but my eyes, my, you know, I trust my eyes. That's, that's, I know you trust your, your football eyes. And there's certain things. I think he's gotten so much better with his hands, disengaging from blocks, natural pass rushing ability. We saw some of those things last year. And the versatility. He actually was playing a lot of strong side with Collins on the inside. And, and, and now you're going to see kind of reverse, right, where Collins will play more on the outside in conjunction with Jacoby Jones, and you have Colburn and Sweat in there. So he can – the fact that a lot of these guys are interchangeable, I think Bo Davis is going to be able to do some cool stuff and, and move people around and really screw up some teams. Like, there could be one week where he's like, yo, I want Ojemal against that guard. Mm-hmm. We're going to run this stunt or do this thing just to, to show something different, even though you may always normally be over here. And, like – it's these 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 guys up front trying to say it all the time the fastest way to punch your ticket to the playoffs if if you're not already at that level defensive line the the big boys up front it's the big boys up front that's why look y'all hate a lot of people hate on a&m and all that type of stuff right like look at demarvion leal and brandon brandon will come back on this channel and tell you they finished what top five ranked fourth in the country or whatever last year because they had a dominant defensive line and a dominant offensive line too. But the deep, they, it matters in college football if you want to push forward. Now, they didn't make the playoffs, but the teams, the Clemsons of the world, the Alabamas, mm-hmm. LSU when they were rolling, you've got to have multiple people like this. You have to have people in your program that develop into this, uh, into what we are projecting Ojimo to to be. I think people are going to say, "Hey, Steve Tran, that might be too high." Hopefully, you hear the excitement. I've I've, I've, the I've seen a lot of people in the comments actually. They, they they're giving Ojimo uh, a lot of credit. They 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 see the upside potential of this this young man, and um, I I just like I can't get over the fact that he's twenty years old and his third year in the in the in the game. And you know? if if you listen to him speak, you'll be even more impressed. And didn't he so, not start football until s- sophomore year in high school, too? That I don't know. If you're hearing, you know, from the Katy area, you let us know. Uh, those of you I, I, I can I can look it up. It, it was either him or, or Osai. It was either him or Osai that started late in in their high school. Osai career. started football late. Okay, so it was Osai. Um. All right. Well, another person whose last name starts with an O will go to the Arm Bandit. It's our top four. And some of you may be questioning why he isn't, you know, lower or higher, however you want to play it, but closer to number one. We have him here at number four, though, DeMarvion Overshone. Only reason why I wouldn't, I don't have him in my top three. Is and I think Tran, we we agreed on this when we put this together. The injuries and Tran, you're going to go over. I'm actually kicking to you right now. The amount of football he's played isn't a whole lot. He's an extremely productive player, no doubt about it. Look at the stat lines just from 2020, the 10 games he played, which is a plus because he actually got to play 10 games last year, as I just mentioned injuries, but. 60 tackles, eight tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, a sack and seven. Seven, seven passes defended. Seven from passes the, defended. From the linebacker yeah, position. I, even, I forgot to add that one yeah, on here. Just, just seven, wanted to throw so, that out there. You've got all these, these numbers that he generates. We saw a snippet in 2019. I think that's when you named him Mr. PER. Yep. And then we got – a bigger taste of it in 2020 and he really didn't know what he was doing yet. Yeah. <laughs> he figured it out along the, on the, along the way, Coleman Hutzler, Chris Ash, they worked with him. And by the end of the season, he was one of the best players on the team and he finished that way. The reason why we've scaled back is scheme change, different coaches still hasn't played a lot of linebacker and he missed the spring. And so to me, I do still have some question, like, how's he going to be tackling game one? Are his angles going to be on point? Like, I realized, like, I felt like he needed 
a few games last year to really ramp to where he got to. He got there. Or if it's NFL season now for, for Mr. Overshone, he comes out game one balling. He comes out game one, I'm talking about 12 tackles, a sack, getting your hands on the ball, and make in where it's like, oh, okay, there's the arm bandit. Mm-hmm. And he and it's and it's okay. He's picking up where he left off against Colorado in that bowl game. That's the same guy. That's what we need to see, Tran. So yeah, uh just, just piggyback off of what you said. Um he's the thing that really has me a cause for pause for him. Um and him being this high, I mean four is still pretty respectable, is the shoulder surgery. You're at a linebacker position where you're sometimes going between the tackles and you're 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 hitting the shoulder constantly. You know, I know his mental right now is he's thinking paycheck here. This is my paycheck here. This is where I'm getting paid. Um, but sometimes the body doesn't listen to what the mind has to say. And I, that's that's my biggest fear for him because I know I'm I'm one of the biggest fans. And I I was so psyched when they when they moved him from safety to linebacker because I knew what we had with him. Um, so. He's going to be the leader of the defense. We saw that. We, we talked about the uh, Colorado game being, being the changing of the guard for offense, where we saw Sam Ellinger legitimately say, Bijan's the face. You know, uh, the same thing happened for our defense. And he's he's the face of our defense. Um, he's he's the, the vocal leader of our defense. And you always got to have that one guy that, you know, is absurd confidence guy. <laughs> but is his confidence is absurd. I mean, he, he produces, he put, he puts it out there, but he's the one who's going to get everyone aligned. He's going to be the one who's, who's going to be making the plays. So, you know, that's, that's why he's one of the most important people on our team. I think he's the most unique player on the defense in terms of what he brings. Do I think that David Benda could come in? Yes. David Benda is very fast. Could come yes. in and, and be very productive and eat. Absolutely. And I even think, you know, say Overshawn goes to the league, I think I think you you pencil in. We're in good hands. Yeah, time. we're we're in good hands. But Overshawn does some things, and I've seen him do some things that nobody else can do, like some Isaiah Simmons, Clemson type stuff. Um, when it comes to and I'm even going back to twenty nineteen, where he would where it's like a wheel route and he could just that he he can flatten out an angle and get there. Length, hands on on balls. The, the, even the interception he had playing zone, able to turn and run and locate the football. Um, I think he has a unique ability to football out and, and get his hands on it. Similar to Joe last year. Joe 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 got really good at that, and I think Overshone can even do that at a similar level as a blitzer. There's nothing I see him that he's not capable of doing. And I still, you know, he, I just got to see the, the, that the shoulder, like you're saying, isn't an issue. And he just, he's able to just continue to ramp. I'm just really concerned that he's going to need a little bit of time from a game speed perspective to get back to what he needs to get back to. Now, if they're, if they're still 2-0 and, and he's he's a little off to a sluggish start, I'm willing to excuse it because by conference play, he'll be he'll be his normal self. But I've got to see it. You know, they, 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 they seem to have him on a pitch count in practice from, you know, depending on who you listen to. But, and, and I know we're spending a lot of time here kind of tiptoeing around, but it's a very delicate thing with this player because – he can impact so many parts of the game and he can totally be a nightmare for a quarterback. He can be one of the best quarterback spies. Mm -hmm. Whatever you need this dude to do, he can do it. All right. I I agree. So I, in that essence, I agree with you being the, the overall face of the defense and, and probably the most marketable person you can, you can have for the defense. I would say though, the leader, Mm-hmm. And the person that guys listen to and, and the, the big boy that everybody gravitates around, I think he's your favorite player on this football team. Correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> he's been my over. favorite player for years. Yeah, um, he's the engine that, that drives our defense. You know, you, you, you so eloquently put it that 
you know, national championships are won with the defensive line, and he's the anchor for it. He's where it starts. He is the one where offensive line coaches circle him, and they prep their game plan around him. Um, he's got a motor on him. He's a big, he's a big, big gap plugger. He's you're not his his stats aren't going to jump off the page for you. Um, I think, and he, he's actually played quite a bit of games. I think, I think he's played what 19, almost 20 games or something like that. But, you know, I think we did the math of, out of all his solo tackles. I think it was uh, 30% of them were tackles for loss, which is exactly what you want to see with a, with your big D tackle is that you, he's getting pressure and he's pushing the offensive line back and he's shedding the blocks and ta- making the tackle, you know, um, uh, his sacks, don't blow, but you're not surprised when he's getting double, sometimes even triple team. Uh, so he's only got three three sacks. The things, the thing I want to see him uh, see him improve on is passes defended at the line, getting any of those big mitts up and knocking the ball down. But I also want him to stay the course. You know, he uh, NFL scouts notice the fact that someone like that impacts a game if if other people are actually getting stats off of him. So I want him to I want him to continue just balling out and just being being the force that we need him to be. NFL people knocked Puna Ford because of his size and you know they didn't think that he could be a competitive defensive lineman <laughs> at the next level and he's proven He just got wrong. paid, baby. <laughs> he just got paid and he's he's the exact same player we saw at Texas. Mm-hmm. Really from jump. I think what the the difference is with Keandre Coburn is he has to have that consistency with the motor because when they grade him, he will have the size in his favor. Uh That won't be a knock on him. That will be something that they say, oh, it's a strength there. But to your point, what what, what made Puna Ford special was all the things he did, whether it was the screen and flicking a guard (laughs) in front of the running back so it screws up the play. There's no stat for that. But the but when we're grading it, we're coaches, and you're like, okay, follow guard, take it to the play. They run screen, you throw the guard down, and now the running back's screwed, and everybody easily can rally for a tackle. Who made the play? Right? So what we've got to see from Keandre Coburn is whether it's – I don't look at stats for, for nose tackle. Now, if you are starting to get stats, like I don't know what – Sean Rogers or Casey Hampton stats were back in the day, but we know that they were blowing shit up. Uh-huh. Like, and and everybody else is able to eat, whether it's the Corey Reddings or the DJs, like whoever is around them. That's that's what we need. And now he'll even be fresher because he has, and this is before, but he's got his running buddy in, in T Sweat. Uh-huh. And T Sweat can do some things that 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 are just ridiculous for his size too. So win your matchup. I said this in the Louisiana video. When you guys are going against a 267 pound center, or you're going against somebody who's a first first year starting center, got to see that consistency there with his intensity because that's the only thing missing from making him be as good a football player as we know he can be. It's just the consistency. I think at times he's probably played too many snaps, to be honest with you. And and I didn't always like the way the coaches used him. And I always thought that he had more of the pass rush ability. If they wanted to take him a little bit further away from the ball, he could play and still make some things happen on, on, on later downs, on passing downs. I would like to see him still get some of those opportunities. Good for the morale of the player. All these deep, all these defensive linemen want an opportunity to rush the passer. They don't just want to be the damn uh, tree stump for yeah. the for the stunt. You know what I mean? Like we we want to get some we want to get some stats too. But I think with Bo Davis being there, Bo Davis, I already knew he was a killer, but he's like, oh no, y'all must have forgot I was a killer. Cause that's the way he's recruiting right now. And that's the way this brother coaches. Okay. I'm talking about like some a Sean Robinson type ish that we saw at Alabama. That's, that's what I need to see from snacks. 
And I think Bo Davis can get me there. That's why we so high on Coburn. So any partner shots for 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 your boy? I'm always high on Coburn. I don't care. <laughs> I'm always high on Coburn. I love it. All right. So the last two guys were uh, preseason all conference guys. And when we talk about okay, path to the NFL or who who would the NFL take, productivity, all these type of things. This particular player, I think, has the best shot from from a 2022 perspective. You, you know, unless Overshone just right or or, yeah. or Colburn or, or even Ojimo, right? But in terms of what we know and seen, and what this person also adds in special teams, Shark Sean Jameson, two years in a row, preseason All Big Twelve. We know he didn't get the interceptions last year, but we did start to notice people started to avoid this man. And when you start to get the avoid, you know, when you're not seeing as many balls coming your way, you're doing something right on the over there. I think he'll have an opportunity, you know, as a shark to hunt, though. He'll be facing the ball a little bit more. He'll be asked to, you know, it's, it's not going to be as much, hey, stay on the hip, you know, you know, get really to turn the ball or, they're not encouraging people to turn for the ball. I think with the combination of what we talk about with Bo Davis and, and the front, he'll be able to hunt. He'll be encouraged to jump some routes and, and make some plays, some game-changing plays for Texas. I think he may be one of the most athletic players on our team. Um, I, I Just to flip from offense to defense and it be seem so seamless – it's extremely impressive, especially uh, especially the way he produced his his uh, sophomore year. Last year, you know, he he didn't have the interceptions there, but passes defended, six passes defended. When you're when you're face guarding someone and you're one on one with someone in coverage, that's really hard to do at a consistent basis. Yep, uh, I do agree with you. I I do think he'll have more opportunity this year at balls. And the things I want to see uh, are the things that, you know, will make him jump off the page is if he does stuff like like what the honey badger did back in the day and he'll pick it off and then return it because that that's probably the only knock against his interceptions was that that he wasn't able. It was just tackled sight on scene right then and there. He wasn't able to use his athleticism and, and make plays on the return portion of it. Um, then you go to his kickoff just the patience that he's shown this past that this past year um his ability to actually protect the ball because that was one of the big things his sophomore year um was that's why they were switching out the kickoff people was fumbles you know he i i trust him back there and i trust he's going to make the right decision um he, he should have more touchdowns than what he has i think he has three total kickoff and punt return touchdowns but, you know, it's it's the averages that you're looking at. Kickoff, 29, 29 yards, uh, punt return, 8.4. Correct me if I'm wrong, the 8.4 average goes with fair catching, right? Because it's zero return yards. Yeah, yeah. It goes to the average. Yeah. Catches, but for punt <clears throat> yeah. returns, um, he wasn't great last year. But career-wise, like you said, that 8.9, that's, ve- that's very good uh, career-wise for punt return. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, he's he's gonna he's gonna show his worth in both special teams and on the defense side. And he, like I said, I think he's one of the most impressive players that we have on our team. And he's trying to be, he's trying to to break the uh, the Jordan Tripley record, right? For 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 return touchdowns. So he's he's got some motivation there, and it's kind of cool because I think as everybody's kind of figured out at this point, if you know. If, I think we're all in agreement with who number one is, but to have two number fives up there, I think it's kind of cool. It's weird things we notice, but Deshaun plays at a position where corners are premium. I'm, I'm excited that we have two corners on this list. Talked a lot about the defensive line, the importance there, but you know, marrying that coverage with the defensive line, I think, both of these groups can help themselves together, right? And so I, I am, I'm just beyond excited for what we'll see um, 
development wise and hopefully an all conference season, not just as a corner, but as a return man for Deshaun Jameson. Now, uh, number one, we all know who number one is. Number Was it a shock? <laughs> we don't need to belabor the point. Face of the program. Everybody, when you have a collective fan base who the entire offseason is a major talking point is why doesn't this guy get the football more? You know you have somebody special. And I think this is the guy that other fans – OU fans, people outside of the Big 12, they're like, you guys have a special runner. And it's it's fun. I grew up as a fan of Ricky Williams. And I got to see the late Cedric Benson. And we saw Jamal Charles. As I got all, you know, these these runners, right? And and you know, Madden came out today with uh <laughs> Legacy college. Yeah, the legacy. I don't know if you saw that train. Yeah, I did. I did. But um, you know, Jamal Charles wasn't on there, and and Deontay Foreman wasn't on there. Who won a doke? Uh, and I know, I know the team wasn't good when Foreman was here. But Foreman rolled off. I think what two thousand yards. He, well, he rolled off like seventeen straight, like consecutive, like hundred yard games or something. Like, yeah, was just wicked consistent every single yeah. week and was breaking off big runs. Like we saw all these runners. Bijan's in that class. I, I I just need to see the production over a season. But when you watch him as a football player and what he's capable of, he's in that class. Mm-hmm. He's he's a special player. You know, it's it's very to me what was the most impressive thing about last season for him was that going from an air an Arizona high school background where they're starting to become Arizona starting to pre, become a right. pretty fer, fertile fertile ground for level, athletes competition yeah. Levels. Yeah. yeah but uh you know going from there and bar- barely being touched in in high school and then going to college football you know, usually there's there's a learning curve. You know, there's there's a not only a physical learning curve, but also a mental learning curve. When he got his opportunity, I think it was in the West Virginia game, and he just went off. Uh, and West Virginia, I talked, I, I I joke around with West Virginia because the uh, the first time uh, we went to that game, they, they they just pissed me off. But but West Virginia's defense was very very good, and he he ran all over their defense got got an 80 yard touchdown taken away from him too by the way <laughs> so I still but uh just to see something like that happen with with I'm I'm not throwing shade at our offensive line we weren't the greatest offensive line that's what makes me so impressed with him and then now we have the coaching with it uh for from offensive line and you know all those offensive players want to block for him. He is – he's just absolutely just a, a – a couldn't, a couldn't miss pro, uh, prospect that, you know, I'm so happy that, that Tom Herman was able to recruit him over here because it's it's going to be – it's going to be a, a wonderful thing just to watch him. I, I'm hoping everything, you know, stays healthy with him because I think the sky's the limit with this this, this young man's capabilities. When you saw what Steve Sarkeesian, Kyle Flood, all these guys were able to do with Najee Harris last year, Mm -hmm. and Najee Harris was, you know, one of the things that appeals to young guys when it comes to Alabama is that if I'm a high-ranked recruit coming out of high school, if I don't get developed, it's really because of me, right? Because, like, at this point, their hit rate is so good with how they develop guys. And I say that because Najee Harris was one of those guys that was all everything coming out of high school. I remember when he was getting recruited, he was like clearly the number one running back. Uh-huh. He was, and he was going to have to sit for a little bit because, you know, obviously Alabama had you know, the dudes there like Josh Jacobs, and Josh Jacobs yep. Damian Harris that were also eaten. But when Najee got his opportunity, he looked every bit the part of the recruit that he was. And B. John Robinson we we got that we got to see the glimpses last year. We started to get frustrated because we're like, yo, if this was another school, they'd be showcasing this guy at this point. 
and we were reluctant to do so. And and some of it was was them understanding, you know, whether Stan Drayton and those guys psychologically, and you know, when he came back from the the neck injury against Tech, and you know, the the committee we had of running backs, all of those things. But by the end of the season, for even when when guys were gone and all this type of stuff, he still wasn't being fully showcased the way we wanted him to. Until Colorado, so really. you're gone because you're, yeah. you're marrying that with people who know their best players of football, and that's another thing. Caden Stern said the teams like OU, the best people always have the ball. I will never for, like, and I know that's not a very you know it's it's not a groundbreaking quote. But football, people make football chess, right? But at the end of the day, did C.D. Lamb get the ball? Yep. Did Kennedy Brooks get the ball? It's the staff's job to make the team successful by getting them the ball. And Texas has to follow suit. Like, can't trick people by saying, oh, he's going to be a decoy or we're going to rest in this series and all this type of stuff, especially in the big games. We ride or die with five. We ride or die because five is going to make life easier for for Hudson Card. Five is going to make life easier for Joshua Moore and Xavier Worthy and give them the opportunities to hit home runs down the field. He opens up everything. You see 15 catches here for 196 yards. Najee Harris caught 43 balls last year, and I know they played more games. But B. John Robinson can do all those things in the past game, too. We're going to play some teams that are, are going to give our offensive line some fits. And B. John Robinson's not always going to have 8.2 yards per carry. We're not in the business of beating our heads against the wall and saying we got to hand the ball off 25 times behind center. No, sir. That's the game where he can have eight catches for 90 some yards and you flex them out. And you do all these other cool things, and you get him matched up in a linebacker, and you watch five be special. He has that versatility because even some of the backs I named earlier don't didn't have that, where you could flex them out and say, "All right, they're shutting down the run, but you can still go catch some balls and get your touches that way." Like he can do all of that, mm-hmm. and that's what's so exciting to have him on. You know, here is our number one player. Y'all can see how excited I'm getting, but I love this brother, and. Um, I know Tran, Tran and I just have such high hopes for for uh, uh, our number one ranked player. I'm just I'm team. just interested to see this uh, the stadium when he gets the ball because you know it's just like lightning in a bottle that one play he just boom bust it and he's gone and you know just to hear a hundred thousand people screaming his, screaming his name and just seeing how everyone celebrates that's what I'm really excited about. I know. He, he gets comp to a lot of different, you know, people try to comp him different people. He really is a unique running back. I think he has a lot of traits, and I think he can be just as productive and have those highlight moments like we saw with Saquon. If, if Now, he, he's, you know, a little bit different body comp, and, and Saquon was a 4-3 guy, and, and mm-hmm. I think Bijan's get has gotten probably gotten faster in this offseason. If if I if I had to guess, and I think you'll see that, I don't think you'll see him get caught from behind as much. I also think that was there was some ball security things there with the previous staff because you saw several people get walked down, and then Tariq Black all of a sudden is running away from people in the NFL. So <laughs> I, I think there's some things in there where it's like, oh yeah, like this dude's not as slow as he looks. I'm not saying Bijan looks slow or anything like that, but I think some of those explosiveness where he takes it to the house versus a 40 yard run. I think we'll also see that too. I agree. Guys hit us in the comments. This was so fun to, you know, our, our, our really our last main full big picture preview. Those of you who have followed our channel for a while, y'all know how Trey and I are during the season at this point. I think we've established a very good, regular cadence again like i said big news coming when we do our live but during the season we're all season right we'll react to stories as they come along recruiting as it comes along but our prep during the week like we showed you with louisiana we we, we're big on our prep we're big on our post game and interacting with you guys 
we're fans. The number mm-hmm. one thing we do is we go to the games, we enjoy ourselves, and we share our insights. So, guys, hit us in the comments. Let's engage. Tran, do we want to do a quick rundown of, of the whole list real quick? Sure. Sure. So, number 10. Number one, Bijan Robinson. Bijan Robinson. Number two, Deshaun. Deshaun Jameson. Number three is your boy, Snacks. Over. <laughs> Number one in my heart. <laughs> uh, Number four, DeMarvion Overshawn. Number five, Moral Ojimo. Number six, Josh Thompson. Number seven, Joshua Moore. Fresh off of uh, his uh, Bishop Sycamore game. <laughs> Shout out to uh, – I forgot.